Welcome to the Ultimate Bloons TD6 Strategy Series where I'm going to be showing you strategies for every single tower from the Dart Monkey to the Beast Handler and every single path in between. This will show you how to diversify your setup and get better along with seeing some stats, tips and tricks and all of the strategies for every single one of the towers. And although that the series is geared more towards chimps mode, this will also show you a lot of tips and tricks that apply to the standard game and will allow you to win with a new style. So today's episode is going to be on the Inferno Ring, which is the top path tax shooter. Another very cool tower. It's going to be coming with the Ring of Fire and the Hot Shots. So let's get straight into it. Now, the Hot Shots is not very useful. I'm not really going to be talking much about this. So let's move straight on. The Ring of Fire is a pretty cool tower. Randy loves it for one, but it's kind of more of a mid game pierce tower. And the Inferno Ring is going to be a late game heavy damage tower and we're gonna see this thing can do quite a lot of damage kind of underrated now for the stats here is the hot shots let's uh glaze how kind of mediocre this is you never really see it around a lot um way worse than some other options that you'll have but the ring of fire on the other hand does a lot of pierce it's very very good and definitely can be used in a lot of situations for the mid game um can just obliterate ceramics very nice and then the ring of fire on the other hand just does a lot of damage very very strong tower one thing that you'll notice other than that uh the ring of fire is just ramped up it has this meteor that does a lot of damage single target meteor that shoots out and you'll notice it has one pierce and we're going to be taking advantage of that but first, let's take a look at the cross bat. So hot shots, I said I wouldn't talk much about this, but if you're getting a hot shot for whatever reason, typically the better cross bat's going to be uh, 302, but really don't really see this used a lot. But let's move on to the other guys. So basically, you have two options, the 5 and 420. So the 502 and 402 uh, cross path has more damage. And then the 520 and the 420 has more pierce and extra range. Now you can use these in different situations, but in most cases in realistic black borders too, the 520 and 420 is just going to be better compared to the 502 and 402. Now, uh, one thing is that basically you get more pierce and this pierce goes to the meteor. So if you notice the 502 it does more single target pierce actually but it can't go through multiple targets but here as you can see the meteor will go through that uh zomg and it can go fly somewhere else and we'll see that later too in the buffs anyways for the buffs these guys are buffed by gwen uh, unfortunately the hot shots is lame and cannot be buffed by gwen but the other two guys can be so the hot shots you're kicked out you're not going to be part of this party the ring of fire come is comes in and now we can see this gwen buff is actually pretty big um we can shred pretty well and typically with this ring of fire you might see it being buffed with a primary training although not totally needed but a uh, berserker brew also again not totally needed can help out typically one ring of fire can deal with some ceramics but if you really want to enhance its power and you're going to be going for the inferno ring this would be a good step because uh, you are going to want these guys for inferno ring too now let's get into the inferno ring and this is where it gets crazy you're going to want stronger stimulant i know i don't say to get stronger stimulant a lot but this time you want stronger stimulant because we're increasing the pierce like crazy this meteor is going to go crazy so every time we increase this pierce by one the meteor is going to do 700 more damage as it does 700 damage with one pierce we keep ramping that up it does way more so let's increase the pierce with our primary expertise our stronger stimulant that will give an extra one we can get overclocked to make it shoot attack faster and then you can also get like abyssal warrior or uh lord of the abyss to ramp it of even further i forgot about that in this case but as you can notice um just these buffs even without the abyssal warrior this thing goes crazy and it's just making it go so insane it's just an awesome strategy you definitely have to use it and now let's take a look at maps um where it's good on it's good with bands and overlaps typically the best tax spots work Work. I guess it works a little bit differently because it's an area effect uh, with the ring of fire but that generally means that you still kind of want to keep it in the same spot because the overlaps and spread out nature of the most optimal tax spots still favor this ring of fire compared to another spot like here where it might look uh, compelling but in long term um, 
it would not be good. I guess it's not that good of a showcase because the Ring of Fire will just destroy ev all the ceramics anyways on this example. But typically, the best tack spots, you're going to be the same for the uh, Inferno Ring too. So just keep that in mind. And the best tack spots, if you didn't know, are underneath the path right next to bends and loops like that spot that I just showed you there. So now let's take a look at our examples. Our two uh, objectives here is using Inferno Ring late game and adding the Ring of Fire to get Pierce in the mid game. So I'm going to be taking my first example on Encrypted here. This is a bit of an interesting map. Um, as for tax shooter spots, this is a great map for tax shooters. Unfortunately, you can't get a village in there, which is kind of a the big point, a big uh, boost to the Inferno Ring, but it's still going to work out pretty good, so let's move on. I'm going to be um, starting out with my hot shots on harder maps. You might not be able to do this. Here I am. Um, it's going to have enough power to get me where I need to go. I'm going to get my sub in there. I'm just going to get that to a re reactor because I can't get a village in. I'm going to need another way to do camo. So this is going to be my way. Plus it's going to do some damage early game. I'm going to get a ring of fire. And then I'm going to need something for round, one, round 40. I don't really have anything for round 40. And as you, if you might have seen the other previous episodes in the series, you know that you can simply get a Moab Mauler. Grab that for round 40. We'll deal with round 40 pretty well. So I'm actually going to do that. So we're going to get uh, the string of fire. And then I'm going to sell that little platform, grab the mauler, um, round 40 is going to come. I can use Gwen's cocktail ability because when you're going to be wanting to use these guys, we're going to be using the hero Gwen because it's going to buff the uh, ring of fire and the inferno ring. Now if you're using the ring of fire for just a mid game pierce additive, you don't have to use Gwen. Um, as I always say, you're going to be using your hero for what synergizes with the late game, not what random towers you add in the mid game to help out clear some of like round 63. So now let's uh, save up for Inferno Ring. So I'm going to get just some extra damage, extra towers that do Moab damage here in the mid game so we can get that. The Ring of Fire is going to do great against the Bloons. We have no issue with round 63 and stuff. Just absolutely shreds the ceramics and all. But Moabs, on the other hand, not so much. So let's just grab uh, that uh, Moab Assassin. That's going to do a bit. Going to do well to single target. And this Operation Dart Storm will also do very well. I'll lift this guy up. And we should just be totally fine with this. I also grab an Embrit just to make it deal... Well, make Gwen and the Ring of Fire deal some extra damage along with the operation dart storm too that will help out it's a plus one damage additive pretty cool um just some extra stuff you instead of opting for like a bunch of these smaller towers it might be a better i guess generally better idea to maybe get more of a mid game well basically a stronger tower that will deal with the mid game better with the moabs in particular so maybe you could do like an arcane spike with the operation dart storm that will do very well or like a Comanche defense that could also shred the balloons up pretty well. But nonetheless, this combination, I'm going to eventually in uh, the mid game here, well, I guess the end of the mid game on round 78, I'll be able to afford my Inferno Ring. And also you can use your abilities there. Uh, Gwen abilities are great too, to help that case. And then now that we have my Inferno Ring, we're pretty good to kind of focus more into the late game. So now that you can't get a uh, village on this map, we unfortunately aren't going to be able to get all the great benefits from the village, including like the range and the pierce. That's really the biggest things. We can kill, still get the stronger stimulant right there. So I'm going to grab that. That's going to help it a lot. Stronger stimulant also helps uh, Gwen a lot. Well, just an alk buff in general. But because we have that stronger stimulant, it's going to be bouncing off into Gwen too. So that's going to get a huge benefit. And now I'm going to need some uh, single target DPS usually. A little bit at least. So first strike will usually satisfy this. But because I don't have primary expertise, our Inferno uh, Ring may not be able to like nab out all of the big ZOMGs because it doesn't have as much pierce as it usually would. So I'm just going to go for a Moab Eliminator. I think that's going to work great and it will evidently work very well. Um, it will take out, as you saw there, took out some of the ZOMGs on the other side and the Inferno Ring dealt with the uh, ZOMGs on the right side very well. Nice and easy, taking it all out. Around 98 shouldn't be an issue. Whatever comes through and comes into the middle should just get shredded by Gwendolyn and the Inferno Ring, as you see. And then the uh, 
What is that? The Moab Eliminator will do very well. The only thing is that it's not really the greatest at taking out the DDTs, so I do have a Sabo for that, luckily. But other than that, everything's nice taken care of. Maybe a Relentless Clue thrown in. I couldn't really get it in because I ran out of space, but that would have helped out a lot there too. So now let's take a look at using this uh, Ring of Fire in the mid game as you can see you just throw it in in somewhere where you need to take out some of the balloons i have this uh very strange maybe not the best setup on pat's pond here for example but it just does a great job taking out the ceramics um you get primary training and even on short maps it's going to take out 63 and yeah now let's take a look at uh another inferno ring strategy this time we're going to be ramping up to midnight mansion which is a pretty tricky map but it's very very cool on this map so let's get right into it i'm just going to be starting off with uh the, some dart starts uh four dart start there gonna grab gwen and i'm gonna be grabbing uh my tack shooter and uh something just to help out in the early game as i said before sometimes you can't just like start off with that attack and go straight into it so I got a crossbow right there it's also gonna help deal with the camos and all and then I'm just gonna grab um this the hot shots attack I know I said it like really doesn't do much but it actually does do some decent amount of damage when you're going into your uh inferno ring it's just that compared to other options really not the greatest on some easier maps you could probably push pretty far with it but it's probably not something that you'll see or uh will be using for harder maps probably uh, underrating its power to be honest like it's it's not maybe that bad but not something that you're typically going to be using and it doesn't have any like potential to go into something better if you're not going to be looking at going into ring of fire or inferno ring so i'm just gonna uh get that that's going to go into my ring of fire with the help of the crossbow and gwen and now i'm going to need something to deal with the moab here i'm just going to go for this uh, attack because I am going to be using some of these tacks for the mid game. Just like throwing an Emberit with Village that will be able to take it out. Use Gwen's abilities. Put it set I set Gwen's ability to be far back so it cleans up the ceramics that are coming out. Because that's uh where the Gwen's cocktail will get the most use. I'll grab my embrittlement up. It's gonna be uh revealing some camo and helping out the overdrive and then i get a village i'm also going to just get camel on the village just because the imbrit's not going to be consistent at all um at least for the difficulty of this map i'm going to get another tack and then i believe i will throw in uh a moab glue there and i realized just i kind of underestimated how much uh well overestimated how much damage i would be doing so i didn't really have enough damage that i would need to get the save up so i just throw in an alk buff pretty early on in there but round 63 as you can see totally obliterated round 64 is coming i'll grab that moab glue and then later that alk buff and then that would be enough power for us to save up into the inferno ring it's a little bit of a pricey upgrade so we're going to need to make sure that we're saving up rather early um you can check the costs and calculators just to see our exact numbers of where you would need to start saving up but I was able to get it again before round 80. You typically want to get a lot of these towers up because once super ceramics come in, we're not going to be able to deal with that at all. So we need to make sure we get it up before then. And then we have the big damage boost, all the power that's going to be able to deal with the super ceramics, deal with the kind of heavier balloons that are starting to come out. And then we can get our support up and then that will allow us to then push through the late game. So luckily I didn't overspend. We're going to be able to get this $49,000 in the middle, around 79, and that will uh, give us. It gave us maybe about a 4,500 leeway. Got before round 80, and now we're ready to destroy. So I'm going to be working straight for this primary expertise. Getting that before round 86. When I get primary expertise, I'll get that free upgrade on the glue. So why not grab that? Very cool. And it'll get relentless glue. I have that stim already can overclock on this map you can't even get abyssal warrior um not like i would because i forgot about it in this recording of the entire video like when i was recording it and now we're going to need something for round 100 i'm going to opt just for this tax zone uh that should do plenty of damage very good and now we can just use our abilities and all gwen's abilities are great we can grab a sabo um i think i grab a sabo i'm not quite sure here 
Turns out I didn't grab a Sabo, but Sabo is very good against round 99 because sometimes round 99 can be tricky. And then round 100, just going to be a bit more of an issue. Um, I did need some round, more round 100 damage, so I kind of realized that just like right now. And I paused it, and I'm just going to grab a Sticky Bomb. Sticky Bomb will help out with round 100. And then that with the Tax Zone destroys round 100, and Inferno Ring takes out the inside. So very cool strategy. Definitely use it. Thanks for watching. If you want to help out the channel, you can check out these new videos. Like and subscribe for more content, support the channel by becoming a member, and joining the Discord to chat with the community. Bye!